Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be going over my main squeeze or go to war build, which is basically, you know, if I crack open my front door, you know, and I see Red Dawn cinematic troops dropping from uh, dropping from planes, I'm going to run to the safe and the the main gun that I'm going to get out. That's my main squeeze or go to war build. And so today, that's what I'm going to be going over. I have right here my 11 and a half BCM build. So. I'm a pretty big uh, BCM fanboy. Uh, all of my like uh, really built and put together ARs are BCM. You know, everybody has that first AR that they bought when they were first getting into getting into guns or when they first um, were old enough to buy an AR. Mine was a Bushmaster, and I've put a lot of aftermarket accessories on it today to make it uh, somewhat functional, but. When I started getting really serious about uh, building ARs and getting into guns, I started uh, researching and I chose BCM. I've had Daniel Defense. Uh, my dad has Noveski. I shoot those a lot and I like them. I like them all, but BCM just has a um, it just has an attraction for me. Just how simple they are, no nonsense, no frills, and just I like all their uh, all their rails and just everything about them uh, for me suits my needs uh, and at a fair price point. So. I'm really, really happy with the, all the BCM rifles that I have. So let's get into this one in particular. Like I said, this is an 11 and a half inch BCM. Uh, this is a SBR. Did all my uh, paperwork for all you uh, NFA hounds out there. Wanted to see my tax stamp. Um, yeah, everything's, uh, everything's kosher on this build, but uh, let's get into some of the details of this thing. So let's start on this build just as Grand Thumb does. Let's start from tip to butt. So right here at the front, we have a Surefire SB2 suppressor. So you may have heard of Surefire suppressors in the RC2. Well, this is an SB2. This is uh, specifically designed for short barrel rifles, um, more, more so like 10.3 inch rifles, like the Mark 18 and other variants like that. It has a little bit bigger opening on the end to allow for ammunition, ammunition that has not properly stabilized. So you're less likely to get a baffle strike. So this is the SB2. I actually got this can, brand new Surefire can, for like 550 bucks about six years ago on Arms Unlimited. Um, pretty good deal. They had running, so I picked one up. Even though it wasn't the RC2, it was the SB2. I said, you know, it'll work for me. So, really happy with this can. Uh, Surefire makes great cans. So, the muzzle device that I have it attached to is a Surefire War Comp. And I'm going to make another video specifically going over this. But do not ever use a Surefire War Comp with, if you're trying to suppress a Surefire can. They just do not work good at all. The war comp does not have a labyrinth seals on them, so you get a lot of gas coming out the back of the can instead of going forward. And every time you shoot it, your hand will be just covered with uh, carbon and, and gas and soot and all that kind of stuff coming out of the can. So I'm going to be swapping that for a surefire muzzle brake. Um, like I said, I'll get into that in a future video, but uh, do not use a war comp if you want to suppress uh, uh, surefire can that's just my opinion but like I said another video we'll get into the weeds with that so uh, coming back even further we have a surefire scout light this is the uh, the dual fuel the big one the I believe it's like a 650 uh, dual fuel uh, but it's it's can take a rechargeable battery or two CR123 batteries so really good light I like surefire lights a lot overpriced yeah but they, they tend to work um, Coming back even further, we have a just a standard plain Jane Magpul backup sight. Uh, nothing, nothing too fancy there. Uh, in the Surefire light itself, we have a uh, tail cap that allows the hookup of a pressure pad. And I have my pressure pad right here, as you can see. And I run my pressure pad back a little bit, uh, not all the way out, just to, because when I'm shooting, I tend to have my hand uh, all the way towards the front of the rail. And if I had my pressure pad all the way at the front, I could accidentally hit the white light when I'm not intending to, just like that. And, you know, if somebody has night vision and you hit that white light at night accidentally, it's basically like a beacon just saying, here I am. So very important not to hit that unless you're intending to. I'm probably going to get one of those, I believe it's like 100 Concepts uh, white light covers for the white light just so that even if I do hit it on accident, uh, no light is emitted because there's a cap. You can flip it up when you're ready to use it, but really good light. Uh, it's on an Arasaka low-profile mount. Super, super cool mount. It brings the light 
just as, as slim and just as, as streamlined as possible on the rail, which I like. It doesn't get snagged coming in and out of a, a bag or coming out of the truck or whatever. So um, I have the M-Lock version of this upper, which I really like M-Lock. I have a BCM key mod. I like the key mod. I like the aesthetics of the M-Lock better. So M-Lock is uh, what I'm going with now. Coming on back, we have the T-Rex Arms sling. And of all the slings I've ever used, this is my favorite sling by far. So this sling is uh, made by, or was invented by a guy on Instagram, Derek Freimeyer. He worked for T-Rex for a little bit, designed the sling, sold it to them, and they manufacture it now. It's just an excellent design in my opinion. Um, just, it has a little bit of padding without being too bulky and, you know, it can adjust, uh, bring the gun in tighter to you, loosen it up when you're using it. It's just excellent. So really like the T-Rex sling, uh, you know, opinions on T-Rex, that's a, up to the, each individual. I really like what they, what they do and what they make. So, you know, I'm a fan, but each individual uh, has their own opinions, but attaching the sling to the gun, I have these QD swivels and instead of like the oval QD swivels that are so pre prevalent, I, I tend to like these uh, D-shaped swivels, so they they make it just a lot easier when you're uh, maneuvering the gun. So if you have just the uh, normal uh, like oval-shaped ones, when you have the the rifle hanging from your body, the whole sling tends to try to compress and get in the little curvature part of the of the uh, of the sling, sling swivel. So with these, it just gives a lot more room for the sling to not bunch up and I think it just extends the life of your swing the uh, attachment points but that's just my personal opinion I like how these feel and how they maneuver um, no complaints there so coming on back we have an aim point t1 uh, this is an excellent sight it has a tango down cover on it to prevent any dust or debris getting in if I want to close the caps. I usually just use it, leave it open. It's usually no big deal, but um, I bought this site used on tax swap probably six or seven years ago, and this thing's still going strong, so no complaints. I have no idea how old it is. It could be 10 years old, but it's worked flawless for me, so really like this site. It's on a, um, I believe it's an American Defense uh, QD mount. Um, pop it off if it goes down or something, which I don't expect it to, so just a good option to have. P mags, I run uh, Gen 3 P mags, nothing crazy there. I have steel mags that I run in it, you know, just all standard capacity magazines. Uh, nothing, nothing too crazy there. Coming on back, this is the, I believe it's the PNT trigger from BCM. It's just the the trigger that comes in their lowers, nothing fancy there, not a two-stage, not a Geisley. It's a big step above a mil-spec trigger, but it's nothing too light. You're not going to accidentally, you know, hit it if you're, you know, your adrenaline is through the roof and you're, you know, just coming around the corner and accidentally hit it. You know, safety should be on, but that's a, yeah, everybody has a bad day, but I like this trigger. Uh, it's it's a nice smooth trigger. It's got a little bit of a little bit of weight to it, like I was saying. So I like that for you know the home defense rifle, which I use this for also. You know, it's not a two pound Geisley that you know you breathe on it, it's going to go off. So which I have those triggers in uh, some of my DMR builds, and they're excellent. So just for this build and the purpose that I use it for, this BCM trigger that comes with the gun is just absolutely perfect for me. We have the standard BCM grip that comes with the uh, comes with the lower. It's just the BCM gunfighter grip. It's uh, more of a straight angle instead of like the old A2 that kind of come at more of a angle like this. This has a more straight angle, which I like. It feels great in my hands. So no complaints there. Didn't think about swapping it out. Back here we have the uh, Magpul backup rear sight. Just standard. They've been out forever. Uh, plastic, just polymer rear sight back up. Um, coming on further, we have another QD swivel, the D-shape that I was talking about earlier. And I run the I run the sling really close together. So one attachment right here, and then one attachment right here. It just makes it maneuvering a lot easier, and that's my preferred setup. But I can also move it back here 
if I choose, but usually just run it close in up here. And then we have the BCM stock that comes on the BCM lower. And again, nothing, nothing too fancy there. It's just a standard BCM stock. It works fine for me. Um, I find that it'll pull a few beard hairs out every now and again when I get a firm shoulder, um, when I put the stock firmly in my shoulder and get down on it. But I think all stocks do that. So nothing really to complain about there. But yeah, that's basically it. It's just a no frills, nothing too crazy nothing you know no gimmicks or unnecessary additions added to this thing it's just a plain jane get it done build is what i call it so pretty happy with it bcm like i talked about earlier i have had zero malfunctions with this thing i'm not super um, consistent on cleaning it but i make sure that it's lubricated and and not dry this thing is uh it runs like a top and i've had zero issues and that's what you want with a build that you know that you may have to may have to use seriously one day which you know the odds of me ever using this thing seriously are 0.00001% which is you know a good thing thank goodness but you know if, if something does happen I have it ready and I know that it's gonna gonna work so one thing I forgot charging handle is the BCM uh, charging handle the medium size latch so gives you a little bit bigger latch to grab onto when charging the rifle you know go, going back i'd probably get the small size latch because this thing when you have it slung it'll really poke into you the big uh the big latch hanging off there so i'd probably go with the small the small is still bigger than the just the standard uh standard issue gi charging handle so um but the medium will do just fine since i've already got it so no need in replacing it but yeah this is just a just a no frills build and super happy with it and I'd recommend BCM to anybody who's looking to get into like a nice, uh, you know, $1,500, $1,400 on sale uh, build. So, yeah, very satisfied. So with the Surefire can attached, it does a really great job of reducing felt recoil and, uh, and the flash coming out of the end of the gun. So we'll take a few shots here with the suppressor attached, see how it does, see how it recoils, and then we'll remove it. And we'll take a few shots with the War Comp that I have on the gun and see how it does. So as you can see, pretty controllable. You know, I have a, a nice firm purchase on the gun, uh, bringing it in tight, and that that is your main recoil mitigation uh, uh, tactics there. But the suppressor definitely does help. It uh, It helps just with that felt recoil. And my dot gets on target a lot faster and you know, it's just easier to shoot. So let's see what it does with the war comp itself. So we've got the suppressor off of the gun and we just have the Surefire War Comp on here now. And the war comp, like I said earlier, we're gonna do a specific video on why I do not like this. But basically, it tries to be a flash hider and a compensator, and you can't do both. You can only do one or the other and do it well. So we'll take a few shots. It it, it does reduce felt recoil while keeping um, just not a crazy amount of flash and fire coming out of the end of the gun. So we'll take a few shots and uh, see, see how it does. Definitely not as loud as a Surefire muzzle brake and not the same recoil impulse as an A2 bird gauge. So, you know, it does all right, but it's just... It just doesn't do one or the other great. So that's why I'm going to be replacing it. Uh, check, check back for that video sometime soon. So when watching videos of people shooting with suppressors, you know, you don't get a very accurate sound of what the suppressor actually sounds like. I just shot a few shots with the suppressor, then I shot a few with just the war comp. And, you know, on the camera and uh, through the uh, playback on YouTube, you know, it, it doesn't sound all that different, but, you know, standing here behind the gun shooting it, it it's just night and day. Um, with the war comp attached, um, the suppressor is a little bit louder than with the Surefire muzzle brake or the Surefire flash hider, three prong or four prong. So, you know, the, the sound is still a little bit louder than it, what it could be if I have one of those different muzzle devices attached to this gun. So, 
just keep that in mind when you're listening and you say, oh, well, maybe that suppressor doesn't sound as quiet as some others I've heard. You know, different mics, uh, cameras, you know, they just pick up audio differently. But this is a very solid suppressor. It's not the quietest and it's not the loudest, but it's just right there in the middle. And it does a good job of suppressing uh, concussion and sound. So I'm very pleased with this suppressor. So now I'm back at about 250 yards, and with the 11 and a half inch barrel, you know, that's plenty of barrel to reach out five, six, seven hundred yards even consistently. If you're going to be shooting at those distances, you may want like a 16 or an 18 inch barrel, but for me and where I'm located, this 11 and a half is plenty. So we're at 250 yards. Let's take some shots and see, see how we do. So as you can see, pretty easy. I have my uh, 50 yard zero dialed in. So, I mean, I'm holding almost center mass here at 250 yards and I'm still getting a hit every single time. So, uh, very pleased with this, uh, this rifle, this barrel, and this optic. So all in all, you know, I'm very pleased with this build. This is set up for me and my particular needs uh, that I may, you know, hopefully never have to use with the rifle and, you know, I'm going to continue to tweak and modify and you know new products come out I'll test them and see if they fit but you know all in all it's just a simple no frills build and it's perfect for what I need it to do so you know I hope you guys enjoy this video so stay tuned subscribe to the channel we have tons of content coming out I'm going to be breaking down some of my other builds we're going to get into some shotgun some pistol content and just all kind of good stuff so hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you on the next one